I'm Mary Fassell, and I'd like to welcome you to Survey 2, Medicine from the Black Death to the Scientific Revolution. I'm here in the Jacobs Room at the Institute for the History of Medicine at Hopkins, and I have some of the treasures of our rare books collection with me. You may well recognize this one. It's Andreas Vesalius's 1543 masterwork, De Fabrica, or as we say in English, On the Fabric of the Human Body. It revolutionized anatomy because it used woodcuts to convey a completely new level of detail about the human body, and they're precise and beautiful. Vesalius's self-portrait is the second image you see in the book. He's using his hand to dissect the hand of his cadaver. He's emphasizing that he is doing the manual labor of dissecting, as well as the intellectual work of writing. His scalpel is next to his pen, literally and figuratively. And I think that his hand, touching the cadaver's hand, has a kind of intimacy that underlines the humanity of that dead body. Like other anatomy books, De Fabrica is a meditation on mortality, as well as an exploration of muscles, bones, and blood vessels. Here's Berengario da Carpi's Isagog, it's a couple of decades earlier than the Vesalius. I have a secret fondness for this book. Sure, it's not the artistic masterpiece that is the De Fabrica, but it was a groundbreaking book all the same. It's in a small format. It would have been affordable in a way that the De Fabrica simply could never have been. What I like about it is the strange energy of its images, like this one. We just don't know why the artist or woodblock carver put in these black zigzags, but it gives the image a powerful graphic feel, unlike the precision and elegance of the Vesalius. And here's the mortality bit. Why is this cadaver carrying a rope? Because most of the anatomist's cadavers came from the gallows. They were the bodies of executed criminals. And here's Vesalius on the same theme with a gravedigger's spade. So in our course, we'll be looking at Renaissance anatomy, contextualizing it. How and why did these men take the bold step of opening up the human body? Were they the first to do it? And what's the cultural significance of their actions? My goal for my students is to help them understand health and healing long ago. I'm an early modern historian myself, and one of the things I love about that period is that three or four hundred years ago can seem just like today, and then so very unlike today all in the same moment. You'll be reading a primary source, kind of nodding to yourself, mm -hmm, yes, I get that, and then bang, all of a sudden you read something that makes you realize just how very different their world really was. I hope to help my students gain a real appreciation of that long, distant past. Want to know more about this course or other online courses in the history of medicine? Take a look at our website for further details.